everybody. Happy Monday. Congratulations. You made it through Iron Fist. So happy you're here. <laughs> Welcome to Collider TV Talk, TV Talk for TV fans. I'm your host, Sinead DeFries, and this is the weekly show where we bring you the latest news in the world of television. Plus, talk about the week or weekend, very long weekend that was in TV. Joining us this afternoon is Josh McCuga. <sighs> That fucking fist is in <laughs> work. And uh, who else is here, Sinead? Just also here is Emma Fife. Hello, I am here, and I'm surprised my eyeballs are still in their sockets. <laughs> there was a lot of TV to watch this weekend. The, the fiefdom was stuck to her room. Yes. <laughs> and also here is David Griffin. Sinead coming in a hot, firing Woo! shots right off the bat. <laughs> Find those iron Woo! shots. I yeah. Think that every, I honestly Common think section's hot right now. That everybody yeah. and everybody out there, everybody at this table deserves a serious round of applause applause for this weekend's TV. Between that and all the Amazon pilots, yes. it was a lot. We yeah. did because, yeah. uh, you know, we're, we are going to talk all, all about Iron Fist. We have five Amazon pilots. I think when I sent out that text, Sinead just, like, cursed me. She has, like, a, a voodoo doll. She's like, Josh, and this television watching. <laughs> well, I love how he's like, hey, beautiful people. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. boy, boy. <laughs> this is what is good. it? Hey, it's hey while you're watching your 13 hours of Iron Fist, can you also watch another five hours of, I of yeah. Amazon whoa, whoa, whoa. pilots? Three and a half That's true, that's true. There are some comedies that's in there. Half Yes, comedies, yes. that's true, that's true. Uh, no, we're going to talk about all the Amazon <laughs> pilots. It, we, you know, we, we got our usual rundown. <laughs> Iron Fist, with all the craziness of Legion this past week. So uh, we got a lot of stuff to get to. Sinead, what's foist? All right, with all the TV set for release this year, two shows are high on the list for us here on TV Talk. American Gods, which will debut on Stars later this year, and HBO's The Leftovers, which will air its third and final season in April. They have both released their trailers. So, Josh, which trailer did you enjoy more? Well, listen, I think that... American Gods looks insane. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I didn't read the books, obviously. And, um, you know, uh, I think that there is something super bloody and insane, but there is something so special about this Leftovers trailer. Uh, I, this show, I'm telling you, I know we talk about it every week or as often as we can. If you are not watching The Leftovers, you really should be. You only have two seasons to binge on. Yeah. They are so easy as compared to Iron Fist. And they uh, are, it's so worth your time because this final and third season looks insane just mm -hmm. like this show is and yet this show is somewhat supernatural in a certain extent it kind of makes sense right. does that make sense to you guys like yeah it, yeah it i does. feel like based on this trailer too it, it looks like first of all i love that we all like the leftovers because mm -hmm. it's it's um it's sad to me that not a lot of people watch yeah. the show but that's the reality not a lot of people watch this show um and what josh was saying it's really easy to binge it's a it's a bingeable show really um but the trailer it seems like it's going even more like biblical in mm -hmm. a sense. Whereas the past two seasons, there was like this underlying religion, especially when they introduced the pastor and he became a huge part of the show. And like you kind of saw that a lot of people were were trying to uh, put, uh, trying to figure out what was going on based coming from a biblical sense. And it looks yeah. like this season, it's gonna be a lot of that, which I think is really interesting because it's a phenomenon that nobody can explain and to see kind of like these two groups of people like kind of fighting on how to deal with the grief is it's incredible 100 yeah i'm curious about this whole impending flood yeah the flood is coming and the how would you feel about seeing your children again yeah. remark at the very end a of the trailer third party yep yep oh, it's insane. and uh i loved the use of that abba song man yeah. <laughs> i love a well-placed abba tune and, and it looks uh, different like when he's running yeah, and he's in the city like it, it actually looks <clears throat> a lot different than last season yes when and also American Gods looks incredible. It does. I mean, I mean both of these to me, just like looking at them from a production design standpoint, mm -hmm. are so visually compelling mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. it makes me want to watch them. It feels like the American God trailer was like what I thought I was going to get out of Preacher. Uh, yeah. I loved Preacher, I'll be honest with you. I thought the middle was a little weird, but uh, I loved Preacher. And I'm really looking forward to season two of Preacher because it feels like we're going to mm -hmm. get more towards what the comic books and the graphic novels are like. Uh, but this American Gods thing, because I, again, I didn't read the book, everything else, and listen, you put our man from, what, from, uh, from uh, come on. The, Deadwood. The, from Ian Deadwood. Machine. Ian Machine. Yeah. Also in Game of Thrones, and I have tons of things. I mean, he's an amazing actor. Yeah. You put him in anything, all of a sudden you're going to watch the show. Yeah. The dude just There's has a that. A couple presence. guys, actors out there who can play God, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dean McShane and Morgan Freeman. Yes. Those guys are just the voice. They just have that, mm -hmm. you know, as, as uh, I can tell you, the sisters never As John Rocco would say, gravitas yeah. uh, in, in their voice for sure. Also, American Gods, though, the characters are really interesting if you do a little research on it. Like, you look at um, Kristen Chenoweth's character. She's playing this character called Easter. Let's just have all those flowers around her so she's very bright.
great, you know, flowery kind of character. And you have Moonshadow, who's played by Ricky Whittle, who's on CW's The Hundred, which know, is one of my favorite yeah. shows. So it's a lot of exciting things. They're old gods versus the new gods. Yeah. yeah. And I also love too that you're seeing like Brian Fuller pulling in some people from show, other shows that he's done that have been canceled because obviously like Kristen Chenoweth was in uh, Pushing Daisies and so it was like yeah. it's so nice to see her back and and she plays in that in that Pushing Daisies look too yeah exactly I, I was gonna say she plays that kind of really quirky maybe slightly deranged role yeah. really well yeah, <laughs> for sure what was that show or maybe it was a movie Wicked. She <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. The only musical I've ever liked. You had to bring it up. There you go. You know, she played like a deranged kind of woman with a southern accent. She had like a cowboy hat on. I don't know. Uh -huh. I'll look it up. But uh, regardless, both two awesome trailers. Mm -hmm. Got some amazing TV coming up here in April. We were just looking at our rundown. Run that down again. What do we, we got coming okay, up? Okay, so April? not only do we have American Gods coming up, we also have Prison Break, Archer, Better Call Saul, Veep, The Handmaid's Tale on Hulu. So much good television yeah. coming out in April. April's a huge month. Yeah. Coming in hot. All right, mm -hmm. Shane, what's next? For the first time in history, really quick, did anyone just have like a ping of anxiety when you just listed much? all the shows? <laughs> a little bit. Watch. We're going to have to watch. And I'm sure Netflix is going to be dropping things because sometimes it'll yeah. just drop stuff yeah. out of nowhere. Yeah, I, I like, kept oh, seeing trailers for that Netflix series about the teenage girl. Grace and Frankie? Who, no, there's a teenage girl <laughs> who dies and she's like, it's oh, like the 13 YA reasons. Oh, 13 why. reasons. That yeah. one's already out, I think. No, it's Really? Oh, it's coming. That's Selena Gomez's. Yeah. Produce show. Yeah. Hey, All Selena. right. For the first time in history, Saturday Night Live will air their final four episodes of the season live from coast to coast. The final four episodes have Jimmy Fallon, The Rock, Melissa McCarthy, and Chris Pine as hosts. There is no word on if this will continue to be a thing going forward next season, nor if people watch the sketches that aren't shared on YouTube. But David, is going live nationwide a smart move for SNL? Is it? I, I, I'm not a big <laughs> SNL expert. I, I am is one. Of, I am one of those people. I'm sorry to say. I watch the clips online. If, if Josh or somebody well, else, one of my I'm friends saying. says, hey, watch the clip online, I do that. Yeah, I don't so, really yeah. find the need to sit down there for an hour or two to actually sit down and watch the whole show. I mm -hmm. just, I'm just not that big, big into Saturday See, Night I grew up, obviously, and I'm a big SNL fan. I love sketch comedy, that kind of stuff. But I grew up on SNL, being at 1130, my parents letting me stay up late when mm -hmm. I was a kid to watch SNL <clears> late <throat> at night. I don't think putting it live across the country is going to do anything for ratings. I think people expect to either wake up and watch SNL in the morning, yeah. watch the clips online, or have or like catch it while getting drunk yeah. or high at, uh, at night. I think especially the way that people consume TV now, it really makes no difference. Because as you say, most people are just going to DVR it anyway, mm -hmm. and they're going to watch it at a time that's more mm -hmm. conducive right. for them. Back in the day, this would have been huge. Sure. But just the way that we take in our TV now has totally changed. So I agree. I don't think it's going to do anything for the ratings. I mean, it's cool. Like, great that all those guys are coming out here to do stuff. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, outside of, you figure, like, The Bachelor, I know, pulls a lot of people watch live, like the live tweet about yeah. it. Maybe Game of Thrones. Yeah. Sporting events, obviously. But outside of that, no one really watches live no. TV Especially anymore. Especially since with SNL, it drops on Hulu the next day, and they separate the clips out. Right. Yeah. So, like, when the Sean Spicer stuff happened the very first time, and it's number one trending, literally, the next day, I was like, what is this Sean Spicer thing? Pulled you up on my Amazon Fire Stick, pulled mm -hmm. up the Hulu app, and yeah. right there was Melissa McCarthy, Sean Spicer, trending. And then I just watched that clip. I didn't watch the whole episode. Yeah, because no. it's, yeah. I, and I think, you know, when going forward at least, you can't put SNL live at 8.30 on the West Coast during football season. On a you Saturday will get night. destroyed. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It doesn't matter if Arizona That's State true. is playing Arizona in like the fourth quarter, it's 49 nothing. People will still watch yeah. that yeah. Yeah. at 8.30 mm -hmm. over, right. you know. And plus people like go out in California yeah. at 8.30. <laughs> yeah. yeah. To dinner or things. Or, or, yeah. or maybe a nice like walk in the park. Sure, a hike, yeah, maybe exactly. Maybe a late night hike. nice yeah. weather all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Maybe, maybe go to the Griffith Observatory, see some stars. Right. And just now David that it's Griffin still like light out at like <laughs> seven, it just feels <laughs> yeah. a lot earlier. Yes. And hell, the sushi spot down my from my apartment, their they're happy hour is from three to ten. That's right. not a happy hour. That's when your restaurant's <laughs> open. <laughs> it's incredible. What sushi place is yeah. that? Like, Omi Sushi. Check it out. It's really good Great. and everything is cheap. Awesome. Here we go. All right. Uh, th that's the classic <laughs> TV talk tangent there for you guys. <laughs> what we you do in L.A. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys weren't hoping for a tangent today, you got one. You're welcome. <laughs> Speaking of tangents. Oh, no. Here we go, guys. Oh, here we go. <laughs> now, I will say this before we go in. You're not going to get a lot of spoilers in this, so Cody, don't worry about putting up the spoiler alert on there. Uh, we did a full spoiler review. Myself, David Griffin, David Griffin Observatory, and uh, John <laughs> Schnapp of Collider Heroes. We did a full spoiler review. 
a lot of you people uh, tweeted me this weekend. I don't know what's wrong with Iron Fist. I don't know why critics all hated Iron Fist. I personally love it. Amazing. That is amazing that you guys loved it. And there's a lot of fans out there that I'm sure really enjoyed it. I thought there were some very highs to this mm -hmm. show mm -hmm. and some very lows. But in the, when it breaks it down, this was a slog to yeah. get through. Yeah. It was it was walking through mud with no boots. Yeah. And it was like, what? It felt <laughs> from the get-go like it just didn't know what it wanted to mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. It didn't know if it wanted to be a, a like hokey classic kung fu film. It didn't know if it wanted to be a samurai story. It didn't know if it wanted to just be like a daredevil going through Hell's Kitchen kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It just, it felt very muddled to me in yeah. terms of tone. Right, yeah. oh, 100%. Um, the pilot to me is abysmal. Uh huh. It, well, now that I've gotten time to think about it. Yeah, I, I wrote on Twitter yesterday that I, I don't agree with the critics, and I, I don't agree with them. Yeah. I don't think it's as bad as a 14, now 17% on Rotten Tomatoes. To me, that's absurd. Yeah, that's like, it's come not that on. bad. You know that's it's not, not that bad. bad. Yeah. Shut up. Like, you know it's not that bad. <laughs> yeah. no. It's not good. No, it's not good. Um, and a lot of people were like, I said last night, I was like, I don't know what it is. It's not great. It's not terrible. What is it? And people were like, it's okay. It's mediocre. And I was telling these guys, that's not the word for it. No. There's not enough to it to even really yeah. mm -hmm. think about it. The first episode that I enjoyed consistently is episode 10. Yeah. Yep. To me, that is a problem. <laughs> it is. And when the worst part of Iron Fist is Iron Fist, yes. that is a problem. Mm -hmm. um, the whole, from the very beginning, the What pilot, is the show about? The show is about an Iron, Iron Fist. Fist. You see the Iron Fist like eight times. Yeah. yeah. It's, it literally is like five minutes of Iron Fist. Game. Running a billion dollar company is not easy, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's, and that's not the easy. biggest problem. Or showing yeah. up to the billion so dollar the, company and just being like, hey guys, probably shouldn't do that. I'm out. Yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> the biggest problem. I'm like, okay, he's got so much going on with all this business stuff that yes. literally took over the show for way too long. It did. Um, to really use the Iron Fist. So maybe once that started settling down, mm. he we were going to see the Iron yeah. Fist, and we did it. I will say, though, Colleen Wing awesome. is a badass. Amazing. Give me that show. Give Amazing. me a Daughters of the Dragon mm. spinoff show. Yeah. I want to see that show. Her cage fight scenes were better than Incredible. every single yep. Iron Fist. Uh, that was the only good say, part of the first actually, five episodes. I actually want to give a, a shout-out to uh, C. Wamhoff on Twitter, who tweeted at all of us, what if Iron Fist, if they had just made Jessica Henwick who yeah. played Colleen Wing, if they just made her Danny Rand and yeah. made it her story. Right. And have her be the Iron And Fist. the one thing we were, we were talking about this on the spoiler thing is that at one point in the show, they say something about her grandfather being a great warrior. And then it was never talked about again. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think Don't that you want the, I wanted the Colleen Wing backstory. If Colleen yeah. Wing wasn't in the show, because listen, Daredevil, that is Daredevil's show. Yes, it is. Right, right. right. Uh, Froggy's fine. Karen's fine. Like, they're around. If Colleen Wing wasn't in this show, this show would have been horrendous. Because she's in it, it makes it yeah. watchable. And it's like, it's so sad be, to me because the acting is, it's mediocre at mm -hmm. best, okay? Uh, mediocre? Yeah. Mediocre. That's, Danny Rand. That's generous. <laughs> that's, I'm sorry. I, mean, that's I don't want to attack a person because... I'm talking about if, if, across the whole okay. board. Across, yeah. If you take into everyone's acting and you put it all together and you average it out, it's mediocre. Okay. Yes. Um, the actor who plays Danny Rand is... Not good. No. <laughs> Not good. That I I can see like there were little tinges of like where I could see how he, this is not his show. It's a bummer because yeah. this is his first major thing and yeah. You blew it. Like it's not. Good. This is Hayden Christensen in the Star Wars. Movie. Yes. Yeah. That's and, what it is. And then, then, then there's then there's movies like Life as a House that I can watch all the time and love Hayden Christensen. So it's a, it's a shame for this guy because I think this is the wrong. He, he was show. good in Game of Thrones. I thought, thought he was good as Loras, you know, Tyrell. He in had Game like of eleven. Yeah, lines he's in not the whole really show. in Game of Thrones very well, much. But, but I, you know, he, he, was, plays, he plays a pretty boy well, you know. Well, yeah. at least right. Like banging but the I, Baratheon. I didn't. Right. I just like did not buy him as a martial no. artist. At all. At all. No. Even when he was like all his little chi things, they're they're unbelievable <laughs> in comparison to the like when he's doing the stuff next to Davos, mm. his friend who is supposedly on the same level. Like yeah. he, this guy is supposed to be the most badass out of everybody, and he falls short under everybody. There's a lot of fight scenes where he's going slow and Davos comes in and is doing like it, it twice yeah. the rate. Well, yeah. and that's the thing overall is is most of the major battles he's only semi involved in, right. Right. and it's all Colleen and Davos, you right. know? Yeah. Mm. So and it's like you don't you don't know who to blame. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. really don't know who to blame because I I, I don't want to blame it all on him. Be, but no. it shouldn't have no. been. He shouldn't have been. Uh, uh, 
it shouldn't have been a dialogue heavy 13 episodes right no. right it shouldn't have been that way so i think it was just awkward oh, for a lot of time and there's just he says so much stuff that doesn't need to be in there so like that is that his fault you know what's kind of funny in this whole thing is like we talk about him coming back to rand corporation and um you know uh, he, he, he the meachams were running the whole thing and they didn't believe him and that that whole sequence who gives a shit what does rand do like we, yeah. they, like we have these holdings. Okay, what do they hold? Yeah, what is their what, what is their is, company? <laughs> like, listen, we know that a lot major corporations have things everywhere. They have little projects everywhere. But at the base of it, Verizon <laughs> is a communications thing. Right. GE is a manufacturing of technology. Yes, they Wash have their machines. hands in. Mm -hmm. Right. They, yeah. they <laughs> one thing. Ran. It wasn't like back in the day. Ran invented silent Velcro, like Garden State, or something like right. that. That yeah. took the the thing. It was just like it's a corporation. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why that's just like one of many things that are wrong with it. The well, writing's not good, the directing's and, not good. And to me, it felt like they obviously, you know, when they first announced that they were casting Finn Jones as Danny, they got a lot of criticism for it because a lot of fans really wanted to see them branch out and maybe not cast somebody that looks just like the drawing in the comic book and maybe go for an Asian American actor or something. Sure. And I think that this to me felt like they took those really early criticisms to heart and they just. Cause you didn't, they totally downplayed his backstory of yeah. like how he became the Iron Fist, which is so much more interesting than him being the billionaire right. kid running the the corporation that we don't know what it does. No, I mean, this might be a spoiler. I don't know, Cody, you know, throw out the spoiler for two seconds, okay? They talk about Kun Lun all the time. Right. We never went there. Yep, never ever. One time we'd like sort of got a cave and then red eyes from dragon. Yeah. If he gets it, and then at the end he's like, Kun Lun's gone. I'm like, well, we didn't know it was there in the first right, place. Right, 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 right. So how are we supposed to care if it's gone? Yeah. If they had spent, we talked about the thing, if they had spent one, because each one of these shows is an amazing origin story episode. We didn't get any origin story. This is like, hey, the, the, I got the Iron Fist, everybody's pissed. I left, and it was like kind of a thing. And now they're like really coming after me. But are they coming after me? Like, people are kind of pissed. I should have been there to protect it. <gasps> I wasn't there to protect it, it's gone. Well, no shit, asshole. Yeah. And we actually cared about what happened in Kun Lun, we would have really cared about what happened at the end. Yeah. yeah, it's just, it's such a shame to me because like I was invested and I kept watching, kept watching, and kept watching. And there were, there were things about it that I really enjoyed. I really did enjoy some, some of the of last it. battles, like near the end of the Awesome. Yeah. And like it, it starts. The drunken master one was pretty cool. You gotta, gotta yep, get that. Yep, and it's yeah, that was great. Yeah. When it starts getting really interesting towards the end, but like it's it, there's too much, there's too much going on. There's too many plot lines. You have the whole Ram thing happening, right? Mm -hmm. And the brother and the sister mm -hmm. and all of that. That could have been literally a separate show. Yeah. Then you have Colleen Wing and her affiliations, and I won't spoil anything. That could have been an entire separate mm -hmm. show. That could have been a freaking <clears throat> fantastic show. Yeah. And or you give her an origin story. Sure. Just the the entire nine first nine episodes. That could have been a show of just her. <laughs> and like, if you want to do the Iron Fist stuff, great, fine. This is what we were all hoping for. But like, make it about Iron Fist. Yeah. Because Agreed. if you just make it about these like relationships that I didn't really care about, it's so hard to to find the good in it. Yeah, mm. that's. I feel like we're mired down in all of the stuff that we didn't like so much that it took away from a lot of the great things. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. really true. Well, the show had a perfect opportunity just to have fun. I know when I saw this, I'm like, this is going to be a t television version of The Raid or something like that. And I realized that it's not a film. The Raid is a two-hour movie, and they can put more money, and they can focus on two hours, and they can do all this amazing fight choreography. And I realized it's hard to do that in a 13-hour television series. But Daredevil has fantastic fight it choreography. Really yeah. There are other series, Into the Badlands, which Sinead and I are big fans of. Into the Badlands has crazy over the top. Right. This is a kung fu superhero story. Go over the top. Yeah. Have them do flips and stuff. And, and, and every time they would hit somebody, it's not like a tap. Like every time you would pat, like hit somebody, it's like, like a tap on the head. Where's the punches? Where's yeah. like the, the, the bones crunch? Like I just didn't feel anything. I think that's what this series left me with. It left me emotionless. And the only time I was glued to the screen is every time Madame Gao showed up. She's yeah. like an evil little Yoda. Yeah. yeah. And every great. time she she's showed awesome. up, I was just like, what's she she's gotta great. say? Colleen she's Wing, awesome. Madame Gao yeah. were yeah. the, the highlights of I this. I mean even yeah. all Fantastic. the other even all the other little gang things happening were really cool. Um the the guy who plays Ward, yes. mm -hmm. he's a good actor. He's mm -hmm. a great he actor. Great. I, and in Banshee he was incredible. And what right? I will say is that I I will give Iron Fist credit that it continues to have more compelling villains than we see in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, because that's often, you know, the argument is yeah. that 
the movies in, in the movies the villains with Marvel is a villain's problem They're, the villains are like not that interesting they're mm -hmm. just kind of like evil disembodied entities but in the Netflix series we have come to expect really good villains and we definitely got some really good yeah, villains in Iron yeah. Fist. we got the good and, and I think the the bad like the bad guys right the villains like you're saying are trending us towards what is super exciting about Defenders, yes. right? Because you you are getting this consistent villain, which again is a problem in this show. The fact that he is fighting the hand and you do not see Daredevil so once is, or yeah. even mentioned once. I'll say one, right. one last thing. I'm not saying a lot because you're going to see Josh and I review it and give our opinions. But there's one scene, not a spoiler. They talk about the hand, and you know, of course, you, you, you're going to have um, a Rosario Dawson's character because Claire Temple because yeah. she's, she's, she yeah. connects. She's the connecting fabric the, for everything. You're talking about the when she first when you, she first hears that this is yeah, what they're so dealing with. Yeah, so she mentions, hey, my friend fought against the hand yeah. and it didn't work out well for him. Now, Danny Rand, his whole being, his whole life has been to destroy the hand. That's all he knows. And she mentions that her friend has battled the hand and he doesn't ask a single question. No, like, right. hey, who? Yeah, who yeah, fought exactly. the hand? He doesn't like, even ask. What, what friend of yours? Where is he? Let me talk to him about this. Right. Like, he doesn't have to show up. I know that costs money yeah. and you got to pay contracts. Like, But a phone call, yeah. like, oh, he's busy. Just an acknowledgement. Sorry, right. he can't stop by. It's just, it very so it's just very disjointed. It doesn't flow very well. Um, it's like if you like let's let me give you this you are coming out to los angeles you don't know anybody your parents like hey there's an actress out there a host and she has a lot of connections would you like to meet her you're like nah i'm gonna take on the city myself right. no yeah. problem <laughs> well the hand is like five times i'm just saying like you would want the connection to yeah. help you yeah. with the hand and if it's a shared universe just don't make passing things like i have a shirt of luke cages that has bullet holes first of all you're not keeping an old t-shirt with bullet holes you're throwing that away or turning into red <laughs> right second of all you, that's your only th like I guarantee I know what's happened with Luke Cage I know that Jessica Jones they're indisposed but Daredevil we haven't seen since Daredevil season two even if he made a tiny cameo yeah. it'd be sick yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I will say like if I look on the whole the whole thing like the whole show as a whole the whole show is old. <laughs> so the first half is is awful, right? Yeah. Um, it's slow. It's there's it's not a superhero show at all. It's literally like a, a CW drama. No, you know what it except is? Except worse. It's it's mm -hmm. basically it's basically the really boring parts of a Law and Order. Yeah. Put into six episodes. The yeah. Show, the show shouldn't be a financial. If you want to watch a financial? Watch Billions. Yeah. yeah. Billions is a good financial show. Right. So right. Be, yeah. Um, the second half of the show, um, starts to pick up. Like I said, the first time I was like, oh, okay, I'm enjoying this was episode ten. Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel like if I'm being 100% honest, and kill me for this in the comments, uh, Luke Cage, the end of Luke Cage was horribly boring now that it's been a few months since I've watched it yeah. um, I can I can honestly say that there was more interesting things happening in Iron Fist at the end than there were happening in Luke Cage but Luke Cage at least had better acting mm -hmm. better directing yeah. it was it flowed better if if those two shows could have taken different things from the first half and the second half and kind of like they would have really benefited from it yeah. i thought if anything after luke cage and seeing that most people agreed with me saying that the show fell off after episode eight i think it was where eight or nine yeah and once that's um, why these yeah. shows would really benefit from 10 episodes well, yeah what the hell i totally agree what there's, the hell are they doing with 13 there's episodes not yeah. one of the marvel netflix series that i haven't thought mm, this could have been two episodes short. Yeah. Yeah. even daredevil sure. season two which i loved yeah. i'm like it would have been even better if mm -hmm. it was just 10. yeah like 10 like sinead give us 10. Give yeah. us 10. Just mm -hmm. one of 10. Uh, I, I know, listen, there's, it, this is going to be the most divisive show in the Marvel Network, mm -hmm. and I know a lot of you are going to freak out, and that's fine. That's yeah. what this is for. It's fun to have different it's opinions. It's fun to have different opinions. Uh, just remember that we're your people, too. Okay. <laughs> um, let's go on to Superhero Rundown. And I, I do want to say a personal thank you to everybody here at the table, because I know that binging these series is a lot <laughs> over a weekend, especially when you have a child and we all have lives, <laughs> and I had a wedding to go to, and, I, and regardless... Uh, I am thankful to have you guys as a panel, so thank you for, for doing all this. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't go underappreciated, I will say that. I know you guys lunch or dinner or booze, whatever. Uh, let's get I'll into take booze. Thank <laughs> you. Booze <laughs> is good. Thank you. Uh, let's get a superhero rundown. I feel like this was, let's start with The Flash. Spoiler alert, throw it up there, Cody, when yeah. you can. There you go. Look at that beautiful spoiler alert. Um, this was my favorite episode <laughs> of Flash this spoiler. season. <laughs> There you go. I loved I loved this episode of Flash. I love the, yeah. the it had that Legion feel. It had that um, you know, you're going into the speed force, mm -hmm. everything's kind of crazy and it's all discombobulated. It was it was written really mm -hmm. well. Um it had it had it had just this really cool heaviness feeling to it because the speed force now finally makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. And it had the flip side of Jesse Quick. 
Yeah. Kind of being a badass. Yeah, Jesse yeah. took on Savitar by herself. I know, it was sick, And it was right? great. Yeah. 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 She's like, I'm the only speedster on my earth. Why can't I fight him? You're like, yeah, you're right. You get it, girl. You take it. Be yeah. Colleen Wing. Take out Savitar. <laughs> um, and I, I, I'm i telling you, this. now we're trending towards something pretty cool. Uh, you know, the musical episode is on. We're going to get to. <laughs> Josh is so excited for the musical episode. I'm he can't so wait. pumped. He can't, he can't wait. wait. Uh, it looked awesome. They're in 1920s gear, singing and dancing like a swing club. Oh, yeah. That's my favorite. Hey, Boardwalk Empire, yeah. come to the DC Universe. The worst parts about Boardwalk Empire were when they would go to the musical parts. Oh, and they're no. like, we're no. in. Oh, uh, like, look at me and dancing and singing. It's 1940s, guy. <laughs> I'm so excited for the music. Of course oh you are. Yeah, musicals are Of course you are, Dave. Yeah. We also got to see some of our favorites come back. Eddie yeah. came back. Yeah. Hey, Bear. Hey, yep. Bear. Hey, Bear. Yep. Uh, we also had, um, of course, uh, Robbie Gamel yeah. came yep. back. Firestorm. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Every part of the speed force yeah. you yeah. had in there. It was, it was beautifully yeah, done. Yeah, it was good. And they're yeah. not happy with Barry. No. no. They're not happy with no. him. He's been messing with time like he wasn't mm -hmm. supposed to. They're not happy with him. Nope. Flashpoint, botch. Yep. Speed force, botch. Mm -hmm. Wally, yeah. botch. Yep. Running in foot, botch. Like mm -hmm. the, he's Barry, Barry Allen. makes a lot of mistakes. Barry Allen's like that guy. You just keep sending your food back. You're like, you are a terrible chef. <laughs> just this, is, you shouldn't be doing this. Mm -hmm. You are working at a five star restaurant and you can't get a medium rare steak. Barry <laughs> Allen's like, listen, I'm gonna fix it, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> Fuck, I, ah, I did it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but this one, this finally was like, all right, hey Barry. Uh, you know, we know that everybody on Earth has told you you kind of suck at this, right. but now that you're in the Speed Force, we're also going to tell you yeah. you're you suck terrible. at this. Yeah, yeah. We can actually trap you you're here the for the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, yeah. you won't work on that. Uh, okay, let's move on to Arrow. Um, Checkmate. 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 This is the big Prometheus Arrow showdown. Yeah. Of course, Prometheus ends up getting the better of uh, of Arrow of, of, of Oliver for right now. Yeah. And then next week we're going to see him. He's going to be you know in prisons. You know we're going to see if he can get out of that. But. You know it's it, a lot of people have been tweeting and, and commenting about Arrow and uh, because it, they almost pulled like a, the sister in Family Matters. Artemis mm -hmm. just disappeared and she's nowhere to be found. Does that does, is she the vigilante then? Artemis is the oh. girl that traded. Mm. So I no, I, but that guy was around when she was still around. I feel like right, feel but like, she like traded on them. And oh, I think she has like a voice modulator that's changing the way she Something sounds. Like Maybe that. it's possible. Because yeah. if not, then Artemis was just a total throwaway. I know we haven't seen her in a while. Character. She's been gone for a while. Yeah. yeah, we also got a little more Felicity this week. Felicity mm -hmm. uh, is joining the Helix. The group, so we get to see her take a tour, and I guess they have like video cameras, like everybody's they're doing like CIA stuff and my yeah. cell phone and everything. So she's pretty happy, but the team is questioning what she's doing. Like, is she doing the right thing? You know, is this the right thing to do? Is she doing too much, too much spying? But you know, she's always a great asset to the team. She's a great tech yeah. wizard. Lots yeah. of Talia this week too. Yeah, I love that. Whoever yeah. that actually she's fantastic. Yeah, she's I love really her. good. Yeah. When I mean, he finally basically finds out, you know, that she is Talia. It's like, oh, Ooh. I never told you my oh, last name. Yeah, that's name. true. Yeah, she does. I thought he, she I thought did he reveal knew. that she was Ra's yeah. daughter this yeah. time around. Yeah, like, wait, yeah. why do you hate me? Oh, I killed your dad. Yes, yeah, my dad. Oh. I keep killing people's dads. My bad. My bad. <laughs> Season yeah. one, I killed too many people. <laughs> <laughs> that book has yeah. gotten me in trouble. That's mm. why, kids, you always put down the book and you pick up the remote because remotes can only get you into a good yeah, place. Yeah, if you find your father's list, of people that you know may or may not have screwed them over, just just put it down. Yeah, don't, don't read the, it. And the book is really thick, like uh, abnormally th abnormally thick. <laughs> just put it, keep put putting it down. It down. Watch, watch some more TV. There you go. <laughs> and we had a new Legends. Yes, Legends yes. of Tomorrow. We went back to the uh, the space race. Yes, it was uh, all about Apollo 13. Mm -hmm. uh, did Tom Hanks make it? Uh, uh, no, no, Tom Hanks Harris, was no Tom not in it. Yeah, yeah, sadly, he did not uh, appear in that episode. Uh, yeah, but Houston did have a problem. In Houston this. did have a problem. Well, I mean, they at one point they thought that they had rewritten history because it seemed like the Apollo 13 was going to successfully land on the moon, no mm -hmm. problems. Um, but obviously, that was because of, uh, of people messing around with uh, the timeline and appearing where they shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. So Barry was in this episode then. No, uh, no, 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 Barry, no, he Barry, wasn't. No but uh, that would have made sense. But we did get a great moment. I thought uh, Emma with uh, Eobard Thon and Ray Palmer. They, yes. they, they were trapped together in the capsule, and they had to kind of work us together as a team to get out of a tough situation. They, they had really good chemistry. Yeah, I, I, yeah I, I totally bought that scene. Mm -hmm. And again, it's like I, I liked seeing when the heroes and villains are kind of forced to cooperate and mm -hmm. not like mad about Like that was the thing was I liked that they were both pretty accepting of it. They're like, yeah, I don't really want to die on the moon, right. so let's figure this out. <laughs> so yeah. let's not die on the moon. Yeah. This show's fun because it's a time traveling show. It's not a procedural. It's not that they solved it. But every yeah. episode is kind of self-contained. There's a yeah. big story, but every episode is a different adventure and different time period, which is why I think the show is so much fun. Yeah, they it is. Have fun it's with it's a lot of fun. Yeah. I, poor uh, Henry, though, didn't uh, didn't make it through this one. Yeah. So yeah. basically, uh, Henry, who's Nate's uh, 
grandfather right. pulled out of his own steel, timeline. Right? Citizen Steel. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. He he like was he was like head of flight for NASA. Like yeah. basically he was working yeah, cool. in Houston um, because he wanted to have like a, a sort of exploration job. Mm-hmm. They they go through some really quick reasoning to figure out like <laughs> oh he probably got a job working for NASA. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Is that easy? Yeah. yeah, that yeah. Easy? Mm-hmm. Uh, they happen to be right though. But then and there was this great sort of moment at the end where you figure out that that Henry like rigged a contest so that his son mm-hmm. Hank could like that's that's the son's name right Hank yeah I think so some oldie timey yeah. name like that uh, <laughs> ends up Hank. Uh, winning a contest so he can watch the landing of Apollo 13 back on Earth and so the idea was that he wanted to like meet his son but mm-hmm. unfortunately he uh, had to like manually sort of route the ship back to Earth and got right. ended up dying he got sucked into the vacuum of space he sacrificed himself he did it was it was a very noble yeah. sacrifice yeah. and uh, and Nate was like no I, I have a suit I have powers now I can come save you and he's like nope don't risk your life. I protected my piece of the spear, mm-hmm. and we're good. It, 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 it was the whole thing, like you know, in space, where like the hands go up on the glass, and the yeah. guy's like, "Don't yeah. close yeah. my eyes." Yeah. But they got his piece of the spear of destiny. So. They did. It was in the the flagpole on the, on the moon. Yeah. Oh, nice. The spear was in the flagpole. Sing. Yeah. Legends making some good writing there. Yeah, yeah. it was fun. That's superhero rundown. Uh, let's go into everybody's favorite mental head game. That's <laughs> Legion. Legion, uh, you can take down the spoiler alert, Cody, because again, after this week, still no idea what the fuck. <laughs> but I'm loving it. I really am. Um, I thought that this episode, last week's was my favorite. Mm-hmm. This was a really close second because, well, I guess you should throw the spoiler alert. Yeah, this yeah we got it. Because yeah. this one may need a little spoiling. That it is all along sort of what, what is we thought is that Aubrey Plaza... She is, is killing it. Yeah, she is so great good on this show. And she, they like make her into that devilish looking. Yeah. Thing. And she's hot. She's hot. She's hot one. Yeah. Yeah. She, I like her as that sexy with the curls. Uh, the, 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 <laughs> yeah, as the sort of like evil yeah. psychiatrist. And she has like she has like a rock and roll room where she's dancing, yeah. getting ready. And she walks out like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm back to ready to start the day. It is such mm. a creepily well done episode mm-hmm. because as the episode goes on, they like are figuring right. it out that they're in his brain. Yes. Yeah, and that she is, and that she's dominating this whole thing, uh, and you know, like the, when she's actually playing with his hair, it's sort of an homage to when he, she was he's dead and he, she's making out with him mm-hmm. and that thing. Mm-hmm. Also, too, I noticed that the the devil guy he kind of looks like sausage party. You guys noticed that a little? You know, like he's just like, it kind of looks like Humpty Dumpty. Yeah, like an yeah. egg. Like if he mm-hmm. fell over, he might crack. He's creepy right. as he is hell. Really yeah. Yeah. He's scary. Yeah. Uh, what'd you guys think of this episode, David? I loved. It. I thought it was really cool. And we got to see the you know I don't know if there's a guy from um, New Zealand the. Uh, Jermaine Clement. Jermaine Clement. You know, we mm-hmm. saw the guy in the scuba outfit. He's full um, of oh, yeah. yeah. The scuba outfit. That was cool. I love that That whole, like, di- like there's worlds within worlds. Yeah. Because they're in David's mind. Right. But yet they can still go to that world uh, where he is, you know, in that ice palace thing. Yeah. So that mm-hmm. was pretty cool. I love the relationship between the uh, the older, um, the gentleman and, 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 and the girl. You yeah. Know, kind of bonding and everything. That's, I like, she was so terrified yeah, being it, away from him. And I, I love their relationship. It's such an interesting relationship <clears throat> to me because, and, and even, like, you know, Aubrey Plaza has a moment where she's like interrogating them about like, what is your relationship? Why are you guys always joined at the hip? And right. they're like, it's not like that. It's we not just, weird. Yeah. We just it's... always want to be together. Like We're sort of person. the same person. Yeah. It, yeah it, it's, it, they execute it so well. Mm-hmm. And it could have definitely gone poorly of like, this is weird. This like older dude and this young girl are the same person, but it, it works. Mm-hmm. 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 There is there. And you get a little backstory on each person too. Yep. Um, Nobody's what, neglected. What is the character's name that you can that does the memories? Like he he makes the he goes in the brain and he's able. He's the black guy with the yeah oh, yeah. Yes. I have him right here. And his like really yeah. Deep the actor's memory. name is Jeremy his, Harris. Harris. Uh-huh. Jeremy Harris. Of yeah. his mom dying, oh. basically just collapsing onto the dishes. Yeah and, he, yeah, and like she was saying, like you live in that moment. He lives it over and over again. Because yeah. the thing is, his curse is he remembers everything. Right. Yeah. He doesn't forget a single detail, which is obviously horrific if yeah. that happened to you as a kid. For sure. Um, I the, what, so. We have two episodes left. I know there was a yeah, lot of people eight episodes, yeah. complaining. I mean, where do we go, Sinead? What's I think that this episode kind of just showed that we're definitely going to kind of get to the point where we're questioning whether or not these people are psycho or not. Right. Like yeah. I and I think that mm. I would love that. I kind of like that they're kind of setting them up where they each have like serious issues Mm -hmm. and why I loved this episode so much is because of the backstory that we got from everybody Um, and yeah I know it's there's mixed reviews for this episode because 
it was like kind of like a break from the, the episode before. And that's the crazy thing about this show is I feel like that would usually drive me nuts. Mm -hmm. But the mm -hmm. fact that every episode is so different and like not a lot happens, but a lot ha a lot happens. Like you said that one time, which I think is perfect. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I really like it for this because there is so much going on and all the stories are so interesting that it, it holds my focus a lot. But I think that's where we're going. I think that by the end of this, we're really going to question whether or not David is more mentally unstable than he is super yeah. um, instead of the other way around, which is what we thought we were getting into when we first started the show. You know, you're like, he's not crazy. Mm -hmm. He's not crazy. He's a superhero. Yeah. He's not crazy. And now it's like, oh, yeah, no, he's freaking crazy. Yeah, yeah. And maybe that is his biggest issue is not his power at all. Right. It's his mental illness. And yeah. they do such a great job of handling the mental illness thing. So I just I think it's I think it's a great direction for the show. Yeah. Just a couple of things real quick. The guy who plays plays the eyes, the actor's name is Mackenzie Gray. Mm. It's interesting because he seems to be the, one of the few people in the dream sequence that is still like who he is. Like he right. seems like yes. he's still an like evil dude. Like he's chasing after Carrie. So it's Carrie and Carrie. Yeah. It's Carrie yeah. with a K and Carrie with a C, the two, uh, you know, yeah. the, the people that are joined at the hip. So, I mean, he's, he's still terrifying. Like he seems to be very aware of what's going on. He's in there. To he's in there just to be right. messy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's not just living the life of a, yeah. you know. Whereas like everybody <clears throat> else is kind of brought into like David's world right. in this sort of conflict between him and Aubrey Plaza, mm -hmm. who's like the secondary personality right. yeah. living in him. And you get it, like yeah. this with the the bullet when you get to that scene where Jean oh, Smart's yes. and she's like, I love I, I love that because it's bullets. You can't just like pick bullets out of thin air like it's nothing. I mean, there's right. still yeah. kinetic energy there, and she's yeah. like, ah, oh, that burns. I can't. And she couldn't Trying even push. Couldn't him. push him. Yeah. It's it's that that <laughs> scene was. That mm -hmm. is some uh, accomplishment in, mm -hmm. in yep. film and yeah. TV making. I feel like because the eye is the only one that kind of gets it, that makes him seem the most normal. Yeah. Like yeah. even though he's he is supposed to be the the one we're all afraid of, the villain, yeah, the cr the crazy one, yeah. but he is the one that is the most normal because he understands that this isn't real. Where the rest of them are like. Just they sit down and they just start spilling all their secrets to Aubrey Plaza like it's like they're really you know, seeing a therapist yeah, like yeah. they signed up for therapy yeah. or something. <laughs> it's crazy. It's uh, man, powerful show. We got two mm. more episodes going to eight. Going so. by so fast, man. Yeah, I'll tell really you what. Did. All right, uh, we we have five Amazon pilots to talk about. Let's talk about them briefly. Let's talk about the ones. Let's talk about the three comedies first. <laughs> I'll just say they're all kind of just there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. None of them really were like, oh my God. Legend of Master Legend, I think, was probably the worst of the three. It was a kind of a depressing show. It was very weird. There was not it much comedy depressing. to it at all. It was mm -hmm. very, very, it's it's very depressing. Uh, it, it, it hints a lot on like weirdness and mental illness. And it's it's a very, very uncomfortable show. And maybe that's the point. I don't know. It's based on a true story. It's based on this, this article about this guy that walks around Las Vegas as this real life superhero. And uh, you definitely can, he has like forms of autism. Mm -hmm. I, I, the, the show was very inconsistent. The budding budding prospects, you know, you could see the ending of that show coming from a mile, that pilot coming from a mile away. Kind of a cool thing. It's like dudes going to grow pot, uh, and the new VIPs was animated. I don't even know I, what it was. New VIPs, uh, they accidentally killed their boss, and now they're in yeah. charge. Yeah, yeah. I like and half watched it. The animation got to me. It was like a really rough form of animation, and so it was like very distracting. Well, especially now when we're seeing so much like really good animation, mm -hmm. even in stuff that is you know meant to be comedic it, it is very it felt very like chicken scratch yeah mm -hmm. agreed agreed what do you guys think of the, the three comedies mm -hmm. well i did not watch legend mm -hmm. of master legend because you said I, not to, yeah, <laughs> I, told you to yeah. um, I watched the animated one was it called again the new VIPs. The new VIPs. Yeah. um i like half watched it it's okay yeah. they're sure. all okay yeah, yeah. I, I, of all the you know the half hour comedies that we've seen since we started doing this in the beginning, obviously Jean Claude Van Johnson is my favorite. Mm. Right, it's, uh, by far my favorite. I like Dick was brutal. I, I don't know which ones of these. Sorry for bringing it up. <laughs> Sinead, I'm not gonna bring it up again. But it's not uh, brutal. every time I see the you hated I love Dick. I loved I love Dick. That's the joke. I always say I love Dick on this show. I thought you hated it. No, I loved it. No, she it. loved it. She did. <sighs> I really mm. liked it. It was the only one on the panel that liked it that day. I see. Have I been out of the joke now forever? Yeah, my two favorites that day were The Tick yeah. and I Love Dick. Okay. I Love Dick and The Tick. Um, <laughs> but these three I thought were just kind of all average a little bit. I, it wasn't, they weren't, but The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel 
might be my favorite pilot I've seen in th this year. I mean, in 2017 mm -hmm. by far, uh, and maybe in 2016. I, it was what? Yeah, this Atlanta. Yeah, come on now. This had a whole different feeling than Atlanta. Yeah. I, I mean, Atlanta. It's hard to compare both those things. Atlanta is like a game changer, but so is this to me. Mm -hmm. This show, this is this is something that should be discussed. It's so show was so well done. It was colorful and coming from Iron Fist, I was like, this is a breath of fresh air. It was like unbelievable. That's what you said too. It's like, ah, the show just made me so happy. Yeah, I absolutely loved it. Yeah. I, I mean, everything like just the design of the show was incredible. She's great, yeah. uh, and and just the whole sort of story behind it like right from the get-go like even the first time that she was like because she you know maintains this constant like perfect wife thing so like you know she goes to bed and her hair and makeup's all done and then like she gets uh, then she gets up out of bed and like does her you know mm -hmm. puts her hair in curlers and yeah. washes her face and stuff and then she wakes up before her husband to do the whole process again <gasps> I didn't even hear it. when yeah. she first got up i was like oh she's sneaking out to do stand-up comedy i know oh, she's gonna be the funny one like i i really felt from the beginning that i was like she's the one with the material and right. she's gonna be amazing and that scene where her husband leaves her and then she goes to her parents is like that had like an, bird man. Oh my god, yeah, that was great. It was it's such a, it was an very theatrical. Yeah, yeah just yeah. an in incredible way, feat of cinematography mm. and that whole conversation she has where her dad's like, Well, you need to go back out and get your husband because like you can't take care of yourself and your kids need a father. And she's like, This is not my fault. Yeah. And it was mm. so interesting to see all these people holding her in this incredible high regard until she didn't have a husband right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then right. for her to and for her to fight that it, it i i loved it i want to see this whole series Me too. <laughs> so if, good. if this doesn't get green light i will be legit upset mm, yeah. I, this was uh this was so good to me what do you think dude i think it's the same thing like after coming from 13 hours of iron fist just felt like it, oh, the show will make you feel good check it out if you have amazon prime please go watch. i think the pilots you don't think you even need prime to watch these i'm not sure 100 percent on that you do you, you need do. Prime? okay yeah. so if you have amazon prime check it out it just it just makes you feel good it's just mm -hmm. beautiful and even in the the sad parts there's still some levity there you know you just feel for her and she's does such a great job she's so charming she's been on house of cards yeah. and in other series very good actress it's definitely worth she, checking out. Uh, she takes some risks and she's very very good i think it's the she second most highly voted show oasis second is most. number one so Always yeah now, you you are you liked it but you have two major problems and what are yeah they? Okay. so <clears throat> the show's fantastic i really enjoyed it she's great um and her boobs are amazing Spoiler uh, yeah, alert. They are. you Holy see her boobs <laughs> Jesus. oh my gosh she dropped that dress and i was like <gasps> i she dropped that dress and uh, amanda screamed and i was like whoa her boobs I, are amazing i rewound that amazing a times, <laughs> yeah lie. like what are some of the greatest boobs i've ever seen on tv yeah. not, not gonna lie <laughs> not gonna lie <laughs> not gonna lie they are they're perfect they are symmetrical they're round they i don't know perky. if they're fake or real but they're fantastic. dude no th i think they're real which is the craziest thing she's been blessed She's Good blessed. Lord. Um yeah. okay, so two major issues. <laughs> okay. okay. I love her. Okay. I love her parents. Yes. I, lo mm -hmm. I love her dad. Okay. I love her. I love her dad. Yeah. I didn't really like anybody else. The uh, yeah, I didn't. Interesting. The the yeah. husband, even though we're leading up to him hopefully not coming back. Yeah. I thought was I want her to clown him on yeah, stage. I thought right? he yeah. was terrible. And not terrible like acting wise. I think that she sells that she's in the fifties. And so does Monk, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody else doesn't feel like they're in the fifties. Really? Like, not I, even interesting. The guy not from even, Rectify. I forget yeah. the actors. Yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't get that. And like, w even the woman who's running the club, I love that actress. Actually, yeah. a little too modern for it. Just, it's, yeah. There's just there is a little. <laughs> all of a sudden, the tone changed when it's just her. And like, maybe if she wasn't so damn good, and she she has the voice of someone who's in the fifties. Yeah. She's got everything down. Yeah, especially because she's Jewish and she has right. That, yeah. So maybe if she didn't, if she wasn't, she's perfect. Like she's mm. perfect in the show. Maybe if she wasn't perfect, I wouldn't have noticed it as much. But her her conversations with other people, aside from her parents, that scene was really great. Aside from that scene. It, it, the tone changed to me, and I think it's because really? she she captures the essence of what the show is. 50s housewife who See, is- I thought the mom did too, I thought the dad did too. Yeah, yeah the parents are fine, that scene's great. The mo I love the dad way more than I like the mom, okay. but that one scene is by far one of the best scenes of the whole thing. Sure. Um, but even- You didn't like the friends? I thought they encapsulated yeah, it perfectly. Yeah, I thought, the, I thought especially the, the girl, the, the girl, lady friend when yeah, they were a little, a little bit more, but yeah, I don't think anybody so Anybody got up to her level. I don't. Mm. I don't think not one person got up to her level. M the dad is really damn close. Like yeah. really, really close. Yeah. Um, but but that's might only be because 
she's not even trying it seems like yeah like, it's effortless it's effortless mm -hmm. and her it's her voice like you know how everyone in the 50s talked differently sure um spoke differently and when you watch 50s movies you're like what is that yeah. weird accent yeah. we're from <laughs> Hi, darling. Yeah. we're yeah. from yeah. the yeah. same from city yeah. 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 yeah we're from the same city mm -hmm. like outside of chicago why are you talking like <laughs> yeah. that you didn't like the guy um, who played lenny bruce like he was awesome yeah they're all great Rectify, they're, all, all the yeah. acting's all great like it's not because they're bad actors mm -hmm. right Kirby. it didn't feel 1950s it just didn't feel 1950s when she was with someone else and when it was her I felt like I the tone was impeccable and when she was with anybody else it just dipped a little bit but I noticed it the most when she was with her husband he sucks he sucks and it's not like he's a good actor yeah like, he's a good actor he plays him. it well yeah he plays he's really a good, good. actor yeah. I, um I like that we hate him because we're supposed to he plays that well yeah. but he seemed the most modern out of everybody mm, in the yeah. show um the other thing that needs to go is the music the music Oh. It's fine oh, see, in some parts. It's fine in some parts, but when her, when she loses her husband, spoiler alert, sorry, uh -huh. um, when she loses her husband, then they still played music, and it just, it's at times I felt it was a little bit forced. Where in the beginning I understood that they're setting the scene, and it's supposed to be like da 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 da, mm -hmm. and the music, the music choices were great, yeah. like the actual songs were great. But I just, I, I thought it was gonna stop at some point, and it just didn't, and yeah. it, yeah. it just bugged me a little bit. Gotcha. See, I actually liked that it didn't stop. I thought it sort of added. I thought that was so sort of essential in shaping the yeah. world of this yeah. show. Mm -hmm. But I also understand what you're saying about it potentially taking you out of the scene a little bit yeah. because it is like very you know sort of campy elevator 50s music yeah. right i don't know i could see I had, the, something about that music really made sense although when it first started i was like oh god please don't start singing <laughs> just don't start singing. well yeah and like the title sucks i will say the, the title marvelous sucks. mrs Maisel. The title really? sucks and the cover uh, of it sucks. If I'm just looking, like, to get people, this is like. I don't disagree with you on that. Yeah. To yeah. get people to watch this show, first of all, she's standing next to a microphone that looks like she's about to start singing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm. It doesn't hint at anything else. It's about stand up comedy. Like, she looks like a singer. She, she's all done up. Yeah. And it doesn't hint at any of that. And the title effing blows. It reminds me of Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar mm. Children. Yeah. Like, that's the same kind of vibe I got when I, I first I don't, read it. I don't disagree. You never know because this is the pilot. We may, they may change the graphics the title, around yeah. and title yeah. around. Yeah. But overall, it's. It's great. Those yeah. are those are minor issues. Yeah. Just now we have to wait a whole year or I know. more I know. before we see any more episodes. That's the only sad part. All right, so let's touch on Oasis real quick because we are running out of time. So here. Oasis is my fantasy. So some of you might have known. Uh, I went to seminary. I do have my master's in theology. And when I was there, getting ready to be a pastor, I was thinking, I was like, man, it'd be great if just some you know rich corporation like Elon Musk came along. It's like David. We need a spiritual man. We need a man of God in space. Will you come with me? Like, yes, Elon Musk, I will come with you to Mars. Sadly, that did not happen. That's why you see me here uh, before you right now talking about TV on Collider. But this was my dream. Show. This is my dream. So I am in on Oasis. It's not a perfect pilot. It's a little slow at times. But I want to watch more. Like, we need a man of God. Man of God. Hey, call me up, Elon. Call Kevin, me up. Call, call David Griffin. Griffin. Yes. Come on, hey, Elon. Elon. Dave? Yeah, yeah Elon. Um, <laughs> yeah, Elon. I need a space priest. Yeah. <laughs> Get here. It, it, space priest. He's a Stand. space priest. Yeah, that's exactly they should what have just the called it is. space yeah, priest. They really should have. Uh, no, Love but it. Oasis is the name of like the colony that yeah, they're building right. on this planet. And the idea is for it to be like the first permanent colony off of Earth, because Earth is clearly like mm -hmm. the little bit that we see of it, it's not doing well. No. Mm -hmm. uh, and they like, they kind of set it up. To me, it felt kind of like the mobile game Fallout Vault, where like there's this very sort of, uh, almost propaganda feel to it of, yeah, it's gonna be great and green mm -hmm. and wonderful and perfect and your lives are gonna be amazing. And then you get there uh, and it's mom's basement on crack. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. And that's very much what Oasis is like. That scene, and this is a spoiler, uh, where the, uh, the other, the British guy is talking with him, because basically in Oasis, Right now, everybody's like who's Holy, Robert Baratheon? Who's well, well, yeah, no, but not, not Mark him, Addy. But not, oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Uh, basically, on Oasis, everybody's like starting to hallucinate things from their past that have a lot of emotional significance to them because they have trouble sleeping. Yes, yeah. and he tells this story. The other guy does about like how he used to be into horse racing so much that he bought this race horse, mm -hmm. and then he like the, you know the horse was great. He was amazing. He was winning all his races, and they decided to like give him a steroid. 
uh, for this one really, really big race, and he was way in the lead, and then the horse had a heart attack, and like I just could not handle. It's pretty heavy, especially after yeah, it, it was, was so heavy. sad. It was sad. Yeah, also, the guy from Who Wants to Be a or No Who Wants to Be a Millionaire uh, from Slumdog Slum Millionaire, millionaire. Like, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? <laughs> <laughs> that guy's in it. He? He's a great. Millionaire. A millionaire. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, okay. So obviously, our favorite was Mrs. Maisel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. Oasis yeah. has oh, problems. Oasis, Oasis has had his problems. But Oasis also had his moments. And also, uh, Richard Madden, that's uh, Rob Stark's name. Stark. He can act. Yes. He's good. Uh, yeah. He's a Game of Thrones kid who should mm -hmm. be cast in things. Yeah. He's sure. good in Cinderella. Hey, he's yeah. good. Yeah. He's got a weird Scottish brogue. All right. <laughs> let's go into some highs and lows. Uh, Sinead the Freeze. Uh, all right. Lay it down for us. The, this is us finale. Gotta be honest. Don't want to spoil anything, but it they made you think something was going to happen in the film. They really led you on, yeah. and it didn't happen. And that was right here, like trending towards up. I didn't. This was the only episode of the season. That it's still cry. a great show. Yeah. No, but yeah, it's, 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 still, it's still a really medium, great episode. Yeah. But the episode before was better. Mm -hmm. But even the a Twitter account for the show was like, "This is it." Like, why are you going to lie to us? Like, yeah. Right. yeah, that was not it. Jerks. All right, what's next? Um, love on Netflix. Yeah, a lot of people have been tweeting at me about love. I watched the whole first season uh, mm -hmm. like an idiot. And um, this show is just too inside Hollywood for me. And meaning it's too inside Silver Lake. This like a neighborhood in Los Angeles. It's all hipsters and all they do is complain. It's why I don't watch girls. Oh, this so is, David's going to love it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah you would yeah, love it. Yeah, no, love it's just, I, I try it. It's just, it's, I can only handle so much escapism. God. It's too much. It's yeah. too much escapism. Too much escapism. Right, yeah. uh, feud, Betty and Joan. You know, with it's everything that came out, I didn't watch it. I didn't get to watch it. She loves it. Yeah. So we'll do, we'll talk the next two. Yeah, I also, with everything else, I just did not get a chance to watch it. Honestly, I forgot about it. <laughs> I feel really bad because we it's got great whatever show. came on great on Saturday show. and Sunday. Yeah. I didn't watch. I didn't, yeah. I, didn't, yeah. I didn't even watch Into the Badlands season no, two. No Into the Badlands. Yeah. No yep. black sales for me. Yeah, yeah it's a good sad. one. No time. Right. Thanks, no time. Josh. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Pose uh, the new Ryan Murphy anthology. Yeah, series. just got announced. Uh, there's no. Uh, I mean, he obviously he's going to be at FX, but it's about uh, the 1980s Manhattan, like socialites, pop culture, like artists kind of thing. Because it was a really weird time in in New York because the city was falling apart. You had punk music, all these different kinds of people. Like the shop girl yeah. era was over. The 80s was so dark. You had Ronald Reagan and mm -hmm. Wall Street. It's, it sounds awesome. So Pose. I mean, Ryan Murphy is like batting a thousand right now. Yeah, so he really yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, Bachelor finale, the well, most predictable the show yeah, ever. Obviously, <laughs> we knew Vanessa was going to win, and I won my fantasy league. But mm -hmm. if Raven looked like Vanessa, she would have won. Because Raven was way cooler than Vanessa. Vanessa, and you could tell after the show how miserable they both were. Because she didn't like no, him, I don't buy he it. doesn't like her. No, I, I love Vanessa from the beginning because I, because I love Vanessa. I yeah. think it was really obvious that she was going to win from the beginning. And especially when he was like, I fell in love with you on our second date. It's like, yeah, no crap, dude. She's, yeah. It was so obvious that he was always into her. Yeah. He likes yeah, um, certain characteristics that he's uh, a fan of. Yes. But um, I also kind of felt like Raven like totally knew because of the of their goodbyes or whatever. She, was, she wasn't even really crying When he was hard. like, I'm really going to miss you and she was like, she was like I know yeah, whatever <laughs> no, she said I know she was like I know I like Joe looks back to like that montage of her like singing and dancing like, yeah. yeah we're doing great everything's great yeah I had an yeah. orgasm poor Raven yeah. uh, okay uh, the Expanse it. renewed for a third season. Yes, yeah, great news. Everybody was worried about The Expanse. I was like, no one's watching The Expanse. But guess what, folks? Someone's watching it because Sci-Fi renewed its most expensive show. There awesome. You go. The yeah. Americans. God, <clears throat> the show is just I'll on catch up at some fire. point. I'm almost done with season two. I'll get there. I'll anyway, get there. all right. <laughs> Baskets, also renewed. Also yeah, renewed. got an, a third season. This show, this episode, it's, it's, it's this heartfelt comedy when in a part when you're crying and then you start laughing through your crying. It's it, Louis Anderson... This is like me and my buddy who watched this show. Louis Anderson won the Emmy. Mm -hmm. He all he talks about is Costco in the show all the time, right? Why isn't Costco taking him and be doing like a docu series yeah. of him just walking through stores, going like, you know, you could have this and that. Like, there's one there's one scene where he's picking out a game like Cranium or Taboo, and it's five minutes, and it's the most it's so entertaining. I don't know how to explain this show other than like you have to watch it because it's right in between a drama, a comedy. It's not a dramedy. It's not mm -hmm. like it's. Uh, it's just mind blowing. And what is it based on? It, the, the simple pitch was Zach Galifianakis is a clown and he comes back home to bake Bakersfield. And now we have this whole shared universe. It's wow. crazy. So great. Yeah. Awesome. Samurai Jack. So yeah, the second episode of season five of Samurai Jack something aired insane on uh, happened Adult or something. Swim. Uh, or yeah. So basically, there he, there was a scene in it where he like had an argument with himself about like whether or not 
he like halluc it's like a hallucinating kind mm -hmm. of thing uh, and like confronts himself about like whether or not he should continue to Same struggle right. and try to fight uh, also the daughters of aku uh, started going after him uh, and and something like crazy happened uh, oh, I can't with wait them. to catch up yeah, yeah i'm loving it so no far. it's really I'm good really there's a there's a robot this season uh, oh it's amazing. josh's favorite yeah. robots robots. Yeah. robots as long as yeah. it's not people that are robots trying no, no, not no, to be no, robots no no this is a, this is a robot that is very cool. clear about the fact that he's a robot yeah, so yeah it's great Workaholic series finale. Congrats to those guys. I yeah. was uh, I was doing stand up with Adam Devine when he told me that they got a show on Comedy oh, nice. Central oh. five years later. Uh, you know they kind of changed the landscape, and unfortunately, Comedy Central is losing <laughs> all their quality programming. Uh, and I don't know where it's going. Like maybe Detroiters is probably the best show on the channel right mm -hmm. now, other than South Park. Uh, and but they they ended the series so well. So congratulations to those yeah. guys. Pretty awesome. Um, in betweeners could we come back to TV? Yeah, it's one of my favorites of all time. That's talk about British escapism. Mm -hmm. If you want, wanted to be an idiot British kid in high school like me, this is the show for you. Let's hope it comes back. They're awesome. And you and McGregor images from Fargo. Skinny, Twins. He's fat. Yep. He's bald. He's bald. Has hair. He's hair. <laughs> yep. Fargo. Man. You McGregor's all these guys. All these guys that are doing movies and television are such a great job. You McGregor was in Beating the Beast. Uh, uh, Stevens was in Beating the Beast as well yeah. as, as the Beast, and he's in Legion. So no, Dan least, Stevens was Dan in Stevens. the brain of the Beast. Right. Oh, that's right. That's right. I'm sorry. That's right. I'm and sorry. all I'm of sorry. the like the candles and everything, yeah. he was moving with that's his right. mind that's and right. making them come alive. That's come right. on, guys. Uh, yeah, Legion that's right. Beast that's true. shared that's universe. True. I forgot. Uh, <laughs> real quick, um, the Allison Keen, our good friend and writer on Clutter.com, did a set visit to Fargo this week, and she oh. said it is gonna be oh, that's awesome. crazy. That's great. So I'm excited. All right. Let's go into some Twitter questions. As always, hashtag Clatter TV Talks. Janet, what's first? At Chris in the Zoo says, what shows would you say aired before their time? Shows that are great but weren't appreciated when they first aired. I would say something like a Six Feet Under would kill right now. Mm -hmm. uh, even though mm -hmm. it's one of HBO's favorites, it was in that era before HBO became like this hub for television. Yeah. If they were to re-air, uh, I think, or I mean, if, if Six Feet Under were to come out now, mm -hmm. it would be one of those shows that everybody's talking about. I could even see like The Leftovers have to do it, have done better if if it were done now or last year because we were gotten used to uh, weirdness yeah we've gotten used to weirdness slow heavy like this kind of like supernatural like unexplainable stuff yeah. mm -hmm. you know and that the first season is it, it's it's a lot like it's yeah. a heavy yeah. heavy show and I feel like if they released it now it probably would have been received yeah. much Agreed. better mm -hmm. for me uh, and I think that it's just proving <coughs> it that now it's come back for a fifth season it's Samurai Jack when Samurai Jack first aired that you know it was a time when there weren't necessarily a lot of cartoons, especially cartoons that weren't comedies, that were yeah. not for children. Sure. Um, and so it was kind of trying to be a kid's show at the time, but not really. Mm -hmm. And so people just, they weren't ready for it. And now it's not even pretending to be a kid's show. It's great. Awesome. <laughs> I think uh, Party Down on Stars. Oh, oh yes, man. I, I think if Party Down would have come Party up Down. now, it'd be like, oh, this show's great. Oh, it would have been God. renewed. So but just but that was in the time when Stars was doing their one and their two and done. That's right? true. Like, yeah. Yeah. Party Down 2 and Those Done. Magic stars. City yeah. 2 and right. Done. You know what I mean? It oh, was... But that show is so good. I love Party Adam Down, Scott. Yeah. So good. Uh, okay, what's next, Sinead? Mr. Undecillion says, what was your favorite Saturday morning cartoon show? I love the Bugs Bunny Roadrunner show. Wait, I still love that show. Uh, I was a big Muppet Babies guy. Mm -hmm. And Pee-Wee's Play is... Pee -wee's Playhouse so, was yeah. incredible. Early yeah. days of Cartoon, cartoon Network for me. It was all about uh, Josie and the Pussycats. Ooh, there you I go. I loved Josie and the Pussycats. Um, I watched the Looney Tunes, Bugs Bunny, mm -hmm. all those that good stuff. I've never seen like Muppets anything. Not really? not like a single thing in my entire life. What not even Muppet Christmas Carol. No, it's amazing. I've, I've <laughs> literally never watched a movie. I've never was it a TV show. Yeah, yeah. Never the seen a single thing. I know what wow. they are, but I just wow. I don't know why. Shinasty. All right. Was well, a great caper of the Muppets? Mm. I was like, that was a movie. Was yeah, a great Muppet caper. Um, there was a lot. Like, there was, was a Gummy Bears a Saturday morning cartoon? See, I, see, I was gonna say Ducktales. Ducktales was weekdays. Yeah, yeah. That, it was mean, weekdays. that was Disney afternoons. Um, GI <laughs> Joe came on Saturday mornings. Yeah. Oh yeah, GI yeah. Joe for the real American hero. Yeah. <laughs> Gee. Kids don't smoke weed because it's but too you fun. Just go to war. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's next, Sinead? Um, John Mariano says, "Have you watched Love and Netflix? I oh. wasn't sure I'd enjoy it, no, but I, I do. It's a fun slice of life." There you go. Uh, no. <laughs> um, I, to be honest, like I have heard fr from I've heard season everyone, two's better than season everyone one. Everyone that yeah. I've spoken to have said they've really liked it. So maybe I'm going to give it a whirl. Yeah, I think. Listen, I'm a very, I have a very, um, like I said, for me, it's my nightmare. But for a lot of people, they love it. It's like that show, You're the Worst. Uh, it's it's inside Los Angeles and the people that make living here very difficult. Mm -hmm. So 
for me, it's too much like my own life. And I don't watch right. TV to be like, hey, so your mom calls you all the time. You never answer. You want to watch a show about that? No, I'm good. I don't I'm, yeah. I'm, I don't need that. Uh, love is the same thing. Like the people, it's just, for, but if you like love, congratulations. I'm sure it's great. Well, it's a little too close to home for Josh. Yeah. A little, a little too close to home. Yeah. yeah. There you go. All right. Danny Ramirez says, what items do you look for in a show for it to be good for you to, to add to your must watch list? I, I was thinking about this mm -hmm. because I feel like Marvelous Mrs. Maisel hit it perfectly yeah. is when it, it hits on a, a like a, either it doesn't have to be domestic. It can be international, whatever. If it hits on a part of real life that hasn't really been explored that way. Mm -hmm. And in a really creative way, that's good for me. Like, I don't need to see another sitcom like Kevin Can Wait or yeah. whatever. Uh, I, like, again, like a Baskets where it's like, who thought that, I mean, listen, Zach Alvinak is super talented, but who thought that a show about a clown in Bakersfield would work? And it's just something that's so different and yet done so well. It, it just has to have that je ne sais quoi that another show doesn't have. I think for me too, I always like it when there's sort of a, a compelling visual element about it. Like that's one of the things I love about Marvelous Mrs. Maisel yeah. is it has such a unique look to it. Like, yes, it is a period piece, but it's also unique unto itself. And like, that's one of the things that's great about television is it is a visual medium. Mm -hmm. So I like to see that utilized. Sort of kind of like how, why Mad Men I think really worked for yes, me and why Good yes. Girls Revolt didn't is because Good Girls Revolt felt like people were playing dress up and Mad Men felt like they were Mad Men in the 60s. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. For me, yes. it's probably a great ensemble, yeah, which is so hard to do. Too. Like we watched reviewing Iron Fist. There's good moments. There's mm -hmm. some good acting here and there. Well, you get everybody who's on board. Game of Thrones, no weak links for the most part. Mad Men, no weak links. You could do a whole episode on any of those characters, and they can hold their own through the whole 60 minutes. Not every show can do. That. That's a very hard thing to do. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Sinead? Um, Well, I will definitely agree with everything that you guys have said. Um, but I think for me, like. It needs to have good pacing in order for mm -hmm. me to stick with the show. Um, I, it doesn't have to make any sense. I mean, Legion doesn't make any sense the first time you watch it. Had to watch it twice, mm -hmm. yeah. um, but it it flowed really well. So I like I like a show that flows very well in and out of storylines. Mm -hmm. You can have as many storylines as you want as long as between storylines like there's a good transitions and there's like use of like connection between things and it's easy to follow even if you don't know what's going on yeah just just because something's complicated doesn't mean it shouldn't be easy to follow yeah right on it's good all right there you go guys hashtag a clutter tv talk always happy to take your twitter questions uh david it's time it's everybody's favorite time of the show. I'll do it in uh, my best Iron Fist acting way. What do you guys think? Oh, boy. It's the pick of the week. You killed my parents. It's the pick of the week. Go, David. Well, I'm going to talk about something that's a little bit happier than that. I'm going to talk about Futurama. So I'm going to take you to Matt Groening and David X. Cohen's fantastic series. I think Groening got in a little bit of a rut. Not a financial rut. Dude's still making <laughs> bank. But I think uh, after he kind of got away from The Simpsons, just be kind of became a creative consultant guy, he just, you know, his heart wasn't in it as much, and he wanted a new project to do. And what did he do? I think it was back in maybe, is it 99 or 2000? Created Futurama on Fox, which only lasted for four seasons mm -hmm. before it was canceled. But it was so good. It was about uh, Fry, who is a guy from the year around 2000. 1999. 1999, yeah. So it takes place on New Year's Eve, the first episode, 1999. He accidentally falls into a cryo tube and is frozen for a 1,000 years. Wakes up, it's the year 3000. He meets a cyclops named Leela. He meets a excellent, maybe one of the best robots in yeah. the history of robots in Bender, yeah. Bending Rodriguez. That is his full name. Uh, it's just such a fun story about, if you love science Played fiction, by John DiMaggio, right, if you love Lost actor. in Space, The Twilight Zone, they just play off so many of those old sci-fi motifs that we've come to adore over the years. It's just a fantastic series. Thankfully, Comedy Central picked it up down the road, and it went on for like seven to eight or nine seasons. They're all on Netflix, I believe, right now. I think seasons one through four are still my favorite, the ones that were originally on Fox, but it's just such a great show. It's definitely worth watching. Check out Futurama if you can. If you're a Simpsons fan, you'll definitely like it. There you have it, David's pick of the week. It's a ah, pick of the week. Hey, did wow. you like that one, Sinead? You weren't a fan of that one. You didn't seem to like that. I kind of like the more like wow. pick of the week. Oh, uh, you like that one, Sinead? You want to get you want one for old times' sake? Yeah, go ahead, do it, Josh. David's pick of the week. Yeah. Hey, there you go. 
Sí. 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 Sorry, you're right. You're right. Yeah. My bad on that one. We're still recovering. We're still got like flashbacks. Yeah. A little PTSD. Oh shame. I mean, like honestly, our job is to criticize the hell out of it, right? Um, yeah. If I wasn't uh, uh, criticizing it, it wouldn't it wouldn't sound as bad. Like yeah. it's not as bad as what everybody's saying. Like if, if you're you were going to give it on Rotten Tomatoes one one hundred, where are you going to put it? I'm going to say I'm going to put it like forty five. I would say I would say between yeah. forty and fifty five percent. Okay. Yeah. Some go. I was going to say somewhere in the fifty ish okay. range. Yeah, fifty ish. People okay. sometimes ask us in the comments section like, what are you guys? What do you do actually? You guys critics? Are you commentators? It's like sometimes I don't know because I thought I should be up in a spaceship with Rob Stark, <laughs> yeah. you know, should've being a space, space priest. priest. I was supposed but, yeah. to be a space with, priest, with people. Yeah. It didn't work out for I, me. I, I, think, <laughs> I think you should have done that too. I know. Dang it. Well, we're all here for your enjoyment every week. <laughs> and probably today in the comment section, your abuse can't wait. Yay. Uh, before we get out of here, where can the good people find you on the internet? Miss Sinead DeFries. I will be staying away from the comment section <laughs> after you guys hear me say that End of Iron Fist is more interesting than the end of Luke Cage. <laughs> but um, I am online at Sinead DeFries and at thatsoshinead.com. You can follow my blog, thatsoshinead.blog. And I will be <laughs> back on Friday for Movie Talk. David H.W. Griffin, Space Priest, Esquire. If I don't get a call from Elon today, <laughs> you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at GriffinDE, uh, as well as don't forget Star Wars Rebels, the finale, the big two-parter, one-hour-long finale. Christian Harloff, Ken Napsok, and I will be reviewing that on Saturday right here on Collider Video. Hashtag at David Griffin, Space Priest. Emma Fife, where can the good people find you? You can find me all over the internet at my name, Emma Fife, E-M-M-A-F-Y-F-F-E. -F -F -E. uh, you can also always catch me, or pretty pretty much always catch me, doing the uh, post-game interviews for the Movie Trivia Showdown here at Collider. It is a lot of fun. we got some great matches coming up. Hell yeah, you do a hell of a job. Uh, I'm at Josh McCuga on Twitter and Instagram. Josh McCuga Show on YouTube. We're here every Monday on Collider TV Talk. If you guys are in Anaheim for WonderCon, I will be uh, moderating the panel for Troll Hunters on Friday. You guys can see the break down on Collider.com. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. The executive producers can be there. Special announcement from Guillermo del Toro. So, yeah, that's it. What are you giggling about? <laughs> what happened? Nothing, <laughs> sorry. What, because I was scratching my head? Yeah. <laughs> 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 and there's some blooper reel footage for you, Mary. <laughs> Guys, as always, put down the iron fist. Pick up the remote. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.